Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Gaming to Come video, we're going to be tackling two pieces of news. The first of which is AMD's Ryzen Pro series of processors. That's right, they do indeed appear to be a thing. And the second of which is Apple developing its own range of GPUs. But we'll get into that in just a moment. First things first, let's talk about AMD's Ryzen Pro series. So this has been quite a long time rumor. And obviously, before we knew about the naming conventions, there were some rumors we'd see a Pro series of Ryzen processors, then known as Zen. And then finally, we got, you know, naming conventions of Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, you get the point by now. And there was no mention whatsoever of the Pro. So we kind of thought, well, maybe AMD have dropped it, or there was some ambiguity there. No, it actually is a thing. And you can check this out yourself by going to usb.org, who are, of course, the consortium who are responsible for maintaining USB standards. Now, if you head to products, and then you do a product search for uh, Summit Ridge, and you do this by, of course, making sure you're filtering by advanced micro devices, AMD, you can quite clearly see that AMD Summit Ridge, AMD, AM4 SOC, excuse me, which lists the Ryzen 7 1800X, 1700X, the Ryzen 7 1700, the Ryzen 3 1200, 1400, 1600, and then, this is the exciting part, the Ryzen 3 Pro, Ryzen 5 Pro, Ryzen 5 Pro 1600, and finally the Ryzen 7 Pro 1700. That is a lot of processors, and this is because AMD wanted to get their processors uh, essentially certified to comply with USB 3.1 Gen 1 standards. Now, there are two questions which are automatically raised by the inclusion of the Pro series. The first is, well, what actually are they? So, by which I mean, and this is pretty simple, what is the difference between, let's say, a Pro 1700 and a regular plain old 1700? So, is there, for example, lack of overclocking? Are the clock speeds different? For example, you could take it as Pro, as in it's meant, meant for professional use. Therefore, it runs at lower clock speeds, perhaps lower um, TDP, perhaps it runs cooler, perhaps it's cherry pick silicon, that type of thing. The other way of looking at it is it's essentially... Um, going to be multiplier locked, it's going to be completely and utterly locked to a specific clock speed, it's perhaps going to be cheaper to produce, maybe. The other question which is raised automatically by this is when are they going to be introduced to the market? AMD are pretty swamped at the moment in the terms of their lineup. Obviously, you've got the Ryzen uh, 7s which are out. Ryzen 5s are not going to be too long in the distant future, a couple of weeks basically. And then, of course, within... Pretty much, you know, the same time window, you've also got the uh, Polaris rebrand slash, you know, re-architecture tweaking, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it's going to be interesting to see how all of this comes together. Assuming we do actually see a customer release, in other words, it's possible that these are things that AMD were working on in the background and then maybe the choose not to release at some point. We just don't know. It's It's kind of weird. But I'm hoping that we see something exciting about these. Perhaps they will be professional orientated. I don't think this is going to be a situation where, for example, the Ryzen 7 Pro, 7, Ryzen 7 Pro 1700. God, that is a horrible um, name. I'm sorry, it's, that's not a nice name at all. But then I would have much preferred to hear like Ryzen uh, 1700 Pro. I think that would sound so much better. And then obviously, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But regardless, it's going to be interesting to see how all of this comes together in the next couple of months. So here's one, Imagination Technologies. So, Imagination Technologies, for those of you who do not know, are responsible for producing the GPUs inside a whole bunch of stuff. This includes, but not limited to, Apple's tablets, iPhones, and, well, you know, iPods. They also produce for other companies as well, but a lot of their money, a large percentage of their money, actually comes from Apple, around 50%, which is a large swathe of cash. So, here's the thing. Apple want to 
basically saying no longer do we want to produce, um, sorry, take these processors. Instead, they want to produce their own processors. And the purpose behind that is to basically, well, I guess greater control of its products. The problem is, Imagination Tech have some issues with this. For one, their stock prices have kind of taken an owie. Second of all, the fees in uh, Apple fees and royalties currently for the FY of 8, 30th April 2016 are around 60 million uh, Great British Pounds, and that's going to be up to about 65 million for the next FY. So here it is. Uh, Apple have used, and this is their statement, not my own, Apple have used imagination technology and intellectual property for many years. It has formed the basis of Apple products. Apple has asserted that it's working on a separate, independent graphics design in order to control its products, and we're reducing reliance on imagination's technologies. Okay, so here's the part where it gets a little bit of a slap from uh, imagination tech. Apple has not prevented presented, excuse me, any evidence to substantiate its assertions that will no longer require imagination technology without violation of imagination's patent, intellectual property, and confidential information. This evidence has been requested by imagination, but Apple has declined to provide it. Further, imagination believes it would be extremely challenging to design a brand new GPU architecture from basics without infringing its intellectual property rights, including imagination does not accept um, accordingly, excuse me, imagination does not accept Apple's assertions. Basically, here's the thing. They are saying, uh, in a nutshell, that Apple um, require licenses to not infringe on certain patents which are in place in the GPU market. And this has been a massive issue in, well, technology. Uh, see various Samsung versus NVIDIA lawsuits. It's one of the reasons that certain companies will license uh, technology from AMD, even if they're not doing it. It's kind of weird, but there you go. Even competitors, which, you know, technically you wouldn't think would be normally doing business with one another, well, Intel, despite the fact that AMD are not producing the graphics chips currently, although there are some rumors which we're talking about in this in a separate video. Intel are currently not getting their graphics chips produced by uh, AMD. In other words, there's no GCN cores hidden inside, let's say, KB Link or whatever. But they still have to license the IP from AMD or they risk getting sued by another company, be that NVIDIA, be that AMD, or someone else. And that essentially is the issue that... Uh, imagination tech are telling us that Apple are going to run into. In other words, it's saying that, okay, you might have the ability to produce your own GPU. I mean, let's face it, it's not like Apple are short on cash. But are you going to be able to do this in a way which does not infringe upon a patent of an existing GPU technology? And there's the problem. I don't really want to get into the ins and outs of how GPUs work, but there are several patents in place which makes things a bit tricky because it's not just like, well, you couldn't do things another way. I mean, you probably could, but if you were to do so, good luck to you with the ability to actually develop for it. And there are some reasons where standardizations are important. I mean, I know I keep bringing up the interview, but one of the interviews I had with Neil Trevor, so one of the parts of the Neil Trevor interview, is how standardization is becoming increasingly important. It's, for example, one of the reasons that Kronos has been asked by other uh, companies to start developing standards for, let's say, web-based GL. Um, and it's happening with virtual reality as well. Like There needs to be a standardization. For example, even virtual reality. Let's say you didn't have a standard set of uh, API, which you don't at the moment. It's kind of really fragmented. A company needs to literally produce or a code for each different variant of a different kit. So let's say, you know, you produce one, I produce one, and John produces one. Well, if you're a games developer, that's a bit of a nightmare because if I developed... Um, let's say, you know, a company developed for John's uh, VR system, 
where you're screwed trying to get it working for us. And it's very much the similar with GPUs. I am slightly oversimplifying this. In fact, vastly oversimplifying it. But basically just with how uh, hardware tessellation works, I'm sorry, hardware TNL, which is triangle and lighting setup, the fact that now we're seeing unified architectures in GPUs and various other bits and pieces, it's just a bit odd. Um, I'm not saying Apple are not able to do this because ultimately I don't know what Apple are working on in the background. I'm not, you know, a lawyer. For all I know, they are in talks with AMD or let's say NVIDIA to take those licenses. We just don't know. I mean, obviously I'm making an assumption there. I'm not saying they, they have. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Apple actually deal with this. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.